Hey, what's going on, everybody? So, in this video, it's just going to like um, bring awareness as far as the settings and the things that I did to my RTX 3080 to enhance the experience. So, really, what I noticed is that I got my card directly from EVGA, and it is a EVGA card. So on top of um, downloading the NVIDIA drivers, whether you do it through GeForce Experience or you do it the manual way through DDU, um, with the EVGA, I don't know about the other manufacturers, EVGA has their own um, software in which you can also download the latest firmware for your cards. For stability, it can cause the cards to run um, cooler when under low and all that so you want to go to evga.com and you want to look for slash precision x1 slash i'm going to leave a link down in the description but basically you, you want to download the uh, top version that's going to be the latest one usually and you can read the patch notes like this one as support for the rtx 3090 ti for the win so you download that you can do the standalone through steam or through a game bar i just did the standalone and once again this is for evga cards um rtx uh, 20 and 30 would be preferred for this i believe uh it works on on the gcx um series i actually tried it before installation it just didn't have any firmware upgrades for them but uh that's what you want to do and I'm actually going to open that in the background. And here we go. So this is the, the whole rebar thing. Um, I haven't really paid too much attention to this because I don't have um, any need for it at the moment. But as you can see here, my graphics card is the GeForce RTX 3080 for the win three ultra gaming. And, um, I can see my power here. I have to accept that hardware monitor, LED, control the RGB, and this is the VGA. So usually when you have an EVGA card and this is going to be like your first time opening a program, it's going to give you a pop-up notification and it's going to be telling you that you have a firmware update. You do the firmware, your fans are going to be running at 100% speed. It's going to be extremely loud. And once it's done, it's going to um, be on the most up-to-date firmware. So if you own an EVGA card, you need to do this on top of having your NVIDIA drivers somewhat up-to-date. Because um, new drivers can cause stability issues, as you guys may know, if you're into PC gaming, that is. So I'm just going to exit out of here. So for my setup through the NVIDIA control panel for my RTX uh, 3080, I have it hooked up to three displays. One is a 4K 60 monitor that I'm using as a secondary monitor. One is a 1440p LG G-Sync monitor. And another one is my Hisense UAG, and that is my 4K TV. So I'm gonna pull up the NVIDIA control panel you right click on your desktop area and when you see NVIDIA control panel, you click that. So I'm on, I'm gonna to go to manage 3D settings and I'm gonna do like a breakdown here. So I don't go into here and change a lot of things. I just focus on the things that I need changed. So max frame rate, this is important. Now, as you guys know, I'm also gaming on the TV and how true G-Sync works is that when you cap your frame rate three to four frames below the max um, refresh rate of the display, you're going to always be within that G-Sync zone. So my TV goes up to 120 hertz. So I capped it to 116 um, frames per second. My monitor technology is G-Sync compatible because I'm also on a monitor as well. My preferred refresh weight, I set that to highest available. Vertical sync. V sync is on in the NVIDIA control panel, but you turn it off while in game. 
So basically, it's going to give you the best performance in terms of not seeing screen tearing and also having the ability to reach high refresh rates still within the G-Sync um, zone. And it's, it's better people or channels out there that, that can explain why you have to specifically cap your refresh rate three to four frames below. Um, some people leave it completely off, but this is the best setting for me because I get no screen tearing. Um, it, it's the lowest input latency that it can be, and I don't have any issues um, with screen tearing at, at all. It, it just works. So, you know, that's what I do with that. So I'm just showing you um, my NVIDIA control panel, what I do behind the scenes to set up um, my card and my display so that I can get the best out of them. Um, configure surround the physics. I have my physics tied to just auto select is recommended, but I always put my physics on my graphics card, like always. And um, physics is a powerful physics engine that can utilize your GPU acceleration to provide amazing real time physics effects. So that's all that it is. And I, I, I'll put all of that stuff to the GPU. I want my GPU to do majority of uh, the heavy workload, if that makes sense. Now I'm gonna go to change resolution. So as you can see here, we see three displays. You know, I have my Hisense hooked up, my Septure 4K U27, and my LG, and this is G-Sync compatible. The Septure and the Hisense are not G-Sync compatible, but I really don't see a difference, you know, while I'm playing in game. Um, I guess with LG, the set on the LG has the better motion, you know, I, I will give it that and the smoother image in terms of appearance. But um, as you can see, I'm using DisplayPort. The RTX 3080 comes with three display ports and one HDMI 2.1, at least the model that I specifically have, the Win 3 Ultra Gaming Edition. So, I went to the PC side of things, and it's set natively 2560 by 1440 native, and the refresh rate of this monitor goes up to 144 hertz. So you set that there. For the Septray, this is a secondary monitor of mine. I'm also using the DisplayPort, and um, these are direct connections. So this is a 4K monitor. Under PC, I have it at 3840 by 2160, and it only goes up to 60 hertz. On the high sense, and let, let me show the difference, the color settings. On the monitors, um, I have the highest, you know, 8-bit color for RGB, but on the high sense, on the PC, I have it at 4K, and it goes up to 120 hertz. That's how you enable it on the high sense. A UAG or a 4K TV of your choice that's compatible. And if I scroll down, I am getting my output color def at 10 bit, 10 BC, 10 BPC. Dynamic range is full RGB color format and the highest 32 bit for the color def. And so um, that's how I set that up. And I'm going to hit apply. It's going to like blank out my screen. Let me just redo it. Okay, you didn't give it black screen there. Cool. Um, and the only thing I touched from there is set up G Sync. For G Sync, now this is the high sense UAG. Now notice how it says selected display is not validated as G Sync compatible. So it doesn't matter if I hit this button, it's not gonna do anything. It's just not compatible with G-Sync. Hisense is compatible with um, FreeSync. It does have VR. So honestly, um, VR slash FreeSync, it doesn't matter. I, it's still smooth gameplay and I don't see no screen tearing when I'm gaming on my 4K TV. This monitor does not have um, any VR or free sync or G sync. Um, so no option come up at all for this. You know, this is just, I won't call it bare bones, but it's a secondary monitor. It wasn't that expensive. You know, it's 4k 60 still looks good. I have it part of setup. 
This is my main monitor. Now the LG is G-Sync compatible and I have it enable settings for the selected display. And with G-Sync, you want to enable for full screen mode only. You don't want to do uh, windowed or full screen mode combined because you're going to be getting some type of um, stuttering and frame rate issues. That's just what I uh, research and what I experience. I keep it for full screen only and everything works that's it that's all i do when it comes to the nvidia control panel um and my stuff looks good and it runs good my rtx 3080 when i first got it um and when i hooked it up to my tv it was getting the black screen flickering i thought it was the cable but then i put the same cable into my monitor hdmi port and everything worked fine it was the direct connection come to find out the hdmi switcher the rts card I i'm guessing they don't like the hdmi switchers you know or i'm guessing it, it don't like it when you're sharing that bandwidth or whatever switch however um they prefer a direct connection from the graphics card directly to the TV and that's what I did and I turned on free sync on my TV once I did that I saw no more black screen flicker because at first I thought it was an issue with my power supply but it's 850 watts NVIDIA recommends 750 watts so I had to do some troubleshooting and I got my card firmware upgraded through EVGA Precision X1 and that's directly through EVGA so that's by their um, manufacturer and their settings and things like that and let me bring up the task manager CPU running good at the base speed stock settings memory the speed was 36 megahertz, but um, it's something dealing with my CMOS battery inside my motherboard. I may have to get that switched out, but I'm not even worried about that at, at the moment. Um, everything is running smooth. You know, this is the best system that I've had and owned up to date. The i7 8700K, 64 gigs of a DDR4 RAM, RTX 3080. And I undervoted my 3080, which is basically um, making a car run cooler, um, less wattage. You're saving on power consumption. And because um, these cars out the box, they are pretty powerful in terms of the stock voltages. And when you undervolt it, you're essentially getting um a little less performance i'm talking about like frames and single digits but because the card is so powerful um you don't really see that real-time performance loss unless you're doing a direct comparison and i'll leave a video in the description on how i did that i did that through msi afterburner you know, this is another tool that I use. And, you know, this is getting into like a whole lot of like PC tech talk. I understand that some of you guys probably already checked out. But this is exciting to me because I got my rig fully stable. And if I press Control F, it brings up my voltage frequency curve editor. And as you can see, for, um, for those of you that's watching that understands and did this before, you know, this is um, what I'm running on the RTX 3080 for the Win 3 Ultra Gaming card. And um, performance is great. I fired up that bright memory, infinite, uh, 4K, high settings, ray tracing on DLSS, I believe it was quality. My GPU barely went over 73C. Before I did the firmware update and before I adjusted my voltage and frequency, it was getting like 84C. So the, the card is going to be running 15 to 20 Celsius cooler than at stock settings without me changing anything. So for me, that's a win. 
Um, that's always going to be a win in my book. Uh, I have to do some more testing with Adobe Premiere and some more ray tracing benchmarks and games, but I, I think we on to something here, guys. Um, I'm liking the setup now. More videos coming. Just wanted to get this out the way. Um, appreciate you guys for checking into the channel, liking, supporting, sharing my content if you are, um, and tuning into the live shows as well. Definitely more videos on the way. Appreciate you guys for coming through. And thank you for watching and peace out.